class is memory of Jared Olchen. And today, today we want to speak about the longest parsha of the year. Longest parsha in the Torah, Parshat Naso. 176 verses. Let's make sure it's 176. But if I remember correctly, 176. It's an average. 176, yeah. It's written clear. Huh? What's an average number? Much less than that. 110, 120. Even less sometimes. Many times. There is another chapter in the Book of Psalms. Book of Psalms is also, just like the five books of Moses, the Book of Psalms has many similarities to the five books of Moses. The book of Psalms is divided to five books. Sefer Ishain, first book, second book, the third book, four, five books within the book of Psalms. But not only this, the longest chapter in the book of Psalms is 176 verses. Mm. Just like the longest part in the Torah is 176 verses, What's, the, what's, the, what's this chapter is, is talking about? It's just with chapter 119 in the book of Psalms. And this chapter is about praising God for the beauty of the Torah. How much David, King David expresses, how much he enjoys to learn Torah. How much he's excited about it. How much he lives for it. And it's built in such a way that every eight verse, it's built, built according to the alphabet. It's composed according to the alphabet. The first, uh, the letter Aleph has eight verses. Then the letter Bet has another eight verses. Begin with the letter Bet. Then another, the, the third set of eight verses begin with the letter Gimel. Then Dalet. Then A. The whole alphabet. From Aleph to Taf. From A to Z. The Hebrew A to Z. And then this is the longest chapter in the book of Psalms. Actually, the King David picked up where the Medrash says wherever Moses finished, King David picked up. Moses, one of these last verses in the Torah, he says, Ashrecha Israel. Um, praise are you, how we say Ashrei, how we translate Ashrei? Happy, Happy are you. Fortunate. fortunate are you, Israel. Thank you. King David begins his, his, uh, his book of Psalms with the word Ashrei. Then the Medrash points out Wherever this left off, he picked up. Basically, David was a continuation of Moses. But not only that he started where Moses left off, he also built this book like Moses. Five books of Moses. There is five books of the book of Psalms. The longest chapter, the longest parsha in the Torah, 176 verses. The longest, the longest verse in the Torah, the longest, verse, the longest uh, chapter in the book of Psalms, is also 176 verses. This is actually, and why we know it so well, there is a few reasons. In 170, uh, uh, chapter 119, the book of Psalms, because it's divided by verses in the Parsha, by verses of the alphabet, when you want to pray for a sick person, you take his Hebrew name and you go by the letters. Let's say his name is Abraham, Aleph, you read, you read the first eight verses of the letter Aleph. Then the second letter is Bet. That you read the letter, the second, the eight verses begins with the word Bet. Then is Reish, that you go to the letter Reish, and you read, you spell out his name while you pray for him. It's a very common reading. The other reason why we know it, and why we favor it, because before the blowing of the shofar, and Rosh Hashanah, you say eight verses, um, six, six or seven verses, they are all from this chapter. You spell the word Kra Satan. Kra Satan means tear the decrees of the Satan. That we spell the word Kra Satan, asking from God, please don't listen to the Satan. And he's coming to persecute and say bad things about the Jewish people. That's chapter 119. Now we we'll go back to the Parsha of the week. 
with also 176 verses, this parsha, the longest parsha of the, of the year, the longest parsha in the Torah. Why such a long parsha? There is many nice things in the parsha. There's about Nazarite and about uh, building the um, counting the Levites. There's a lot about the Levites and about Nazarite. But then there is, the Torah describes the inauguration of the f- temple, the portable sanctuary that was built in the desert. And when it came to the portable, to the inauguration, it was in the beginning of the month of Nisan, every leader, a leader from every tribe offered sacrifices to the temple in the name of his tribe. On the first day was the tribe of Judah, a leader from the tribe of Judah, then was St. Sachar, and then Zevulun, and then every day another tribe. Twelve tribes. Every day another tribe brought a sacrifice. And it's interesting, what they brought to the temple, the gift and the sacrifices they brought, all of them were the same. The same exact things. One ball and this, the, the same numbers. The same. And the Torah repeats the same thing again and again. And on the third day, this and this tribe, the leader of this tribe bought the sacrifice. And what does he sacrifice? Ten pieces of this and three pieces of The same thing. And it goes again and again. The reader who reads it from the Torah, he knows it by heart, you understand? He's saying it so many times. He's repeating the same thing 12 times. In an Orthodox shul, the whole congregation is kind of saying it together with the reader. Because, you know, he said once, and he said again, and he said it three times. By the, by the, by the 11th time, you better pick up. <laughs> then why should the Torah, who is so stingy of words, the Torah teaches us many laws in the Torah are, are being said only with one letter we know are laws. Many laws are not even written. For example, the Torah says, in the, it's written in the Torah, you should slaughter the animals as I told you so. You look in the Bible where God told us, it's not written. We know it from tradition. And so, so on, many, many things. Even they are written, they are written in such... Sh- Short, short words in such few words, and the rabbis have to have to do acrobatic to to figure out what 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 God meant, you know. And here the Torah repeats again and again and again and again. Everybody is asking the question, and everybody from the commentaries gives an explanation. But the most main common explanation is something that's very interesting and very important to learn. Yes, all of them brought the same sacrifice. In action, they brought the same offering. Yes. But in their intention, they were all different. We are not machines. We are human beings. (coughs) Judah brought a sacrifice. And all of them bought the same. No, they didn't bring the same. They might bring the same physical, material things. But the soul that they put in the, in the offering, everyone had a different meaning, a different experience, a different feeling, a different anything. And the Torah wanted to make a point that every individual is important. It's not a commercial production. Another 50. doesn't work like this. What's a minion? Every individual is important. You count ten Jews. Nine Moseses cannot make a minion. The ten guys are criminal, they can make the minion. He's a criminal, might be a criminal for other things he go to jail, but the minion is a minion. He's a Jew. The Torah wants to teach us something very important. You know, in Judaism, we are all doing the same mitzvahs. We are all sitting by the same side of the table, and we are all reading the same Agada. Lucky enough, the Agada is the same Agada for all Jews, you know that? The Maxwell Agada, the full Maxwell Agada, is the same thing as the greatest Rebbe's study. This is the Agada. Everybody's doing the same. The Torah is the same. When Jews put on film, 
From Moses to the 13 year old boy, it's all the same film. When, I, when people light candles, Friday night candles, from the greatest Rebetzin to the little girl who is three years old, they all light the same candles, they all say the same blessing. In action, we are all the same. But in feelings, in the intention that's invested in the mitzvah, it's completely different. You walk into a synagogue, there's a hundred people, pray. Everyone is doing the same thing, wearing the same film. Wearing the same talus, yes. But under the talus is a different person. Every person has his own experience, his own feelings. He brings with him his own experience. You cannot compare a Jew who was davening in Russia in the gulags on Yom Kippur to a Jew who grew up in America every day of his life and never had a hard day. Both of them pray, yeah. But uh, when he prays Kol Nidre and he remembers being in, in Siberia and not having a prayer book, it's a whole different prayer. When somebody has a hard time to eat matzah and he eats matzah despite it, and his teeth are hurting him, or he doesn't have any teeth. And he eats matzah. Yeah, the action is the same action. But the effort that invested in the mitzvah is a whole different story. Or somebody who grew up in a religious community and puts on film every day from the bar mitzvah. And then comes another man who is 30 or 40 or 50 or 70 or 80, and he puts on film once. It's a different story. Yeah, they all did the same mitzvah, sure. In action, they are the same. But the feeling, the intention, the effort, what is invested in the mitzvah. The spirit of the mitzvah is a whole different story. That's worth it, 176 verses in a, in a parsha. It's worth it to have the long parsha to teach a son such an important lesson.